阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Today we will continue with the treaties and response and retributions. This will be another session where we will talk about how do we avoid the pitfalls, the traps,、uh, our own, you know, unbecoming, basically. And today we're going into a new subchapter. Which I will show you right now. So previously we talk about、uh, section under section three. We talk about、uh, many kinds of crimes and offences, and we all,、um, you know, just a, re a short revision. We have been,、um, you know,、uh, exploring what this book is about: cause and effect, importance of cause and effect, from conceptual, you know, you read what you sow, into,、um, you know. Peel, unpeeling it and make it actionable. You know what is good, and what is the merit of being good. The core of being good is sincerity, and to show the sincerity, you start with the people next to you, close to you, your parents, your siblings, your friends, your teachers, and then you extend it to strangers, and then you extend the、uh, reach into the people who you kind of have a trouble getting along with. Oh, this is the progression.、Uh, some people might have it straight away into the person they loathe, and they have to deal with that. So, different people, different challenges. But more or less, good always come out from the heart. Has to be genuine. Has to be sincere. And it's a it's a source of strength.、Uh, we can、um, talk more about that when we get to the、um, you know to that section when we finish this round. Section three talks about. Which is the meat of the book? It talks about the pitfalls people co co committed to make it easier for us. There's so many pitfalls we can make. There's so many mistakes we will commit through the deeds, which is action, through speech, through thoughts. So what we can do is,、um, you know, dissect it into different groups, and each group is targeted at different kind of、um, audience, a different kind of a、uh, Uh, people,、uh, not that we would not do it. It's just it was more likely to be done by people of that group. So for first part, it's general, you know, just treacherous deeds. What is treacherous deeds? You know,、um, part two we just finished last week talks about people with power, with authority, preferably I mean, mostly in the, you know in the in charge of、uh, a group of people. Organization or in charge of、uh, you know, the young and vulnerables, so the kind of transgression, the kind of crimes or the kind of trespassing they commit, you know, legal or moral or ethical, or or you know, and which will inflict karma. So all these things is talking about anything we do, we need to face the consequences, and the extent of the consequences can go as far as so your later. Later in your life, or even beyond you, you will affect your family. You will affect your children and your children's children. All right, and if you understand the principle of cause and effect, and if you're willing to understand and accept that this is not just that this life is not just you know confined to this one little bubble. There are always you know past that made who you are today, and that. Who you are today and what you're doing today will make your future self. Hence, past, present, future, whether in this life or in in terms of you die and then you reborn. All right. No matter what degree of acceptance we all have in this concept of, say, be it rebirth in one life or rebirth in many lives, we all have to deal with the consequences of our action, and we all also are the architects of our own, you know. Destiny, our own life. Ultimately, we are the only person who can say full risk, who has to take full responsibility to what happened to us or what will happen to us. And 
mind that there will always be a lot of condition in the middle of this. It was not straightforward. I put the seed in the ground and then it would grow into the uh, to the to the fruit that I wanted. There are always condition. All right. So I'm going to explain these three keywords: cause, which is the seed; effect, which is the fruit. But in 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 the middle, it takes a lot of condition to make the seed to 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 help the seed to grow into a fruit. Whatever the fruit you want, right? You plant the melon seed. You want to you want a melon fruit. So this condition is where you can be the architect of your destiny. We all have good seeds and bad seeds already planted and we're still planting it. Our job is how do we divert it to an outcome that we want that relies on conditions. And on the conditions, there are conditions that we can take in our hands and immediately control. Um, some, some of them is hard. Some of us can, can do it easily. It also depends on your skillfulness, your awareness of this uh, skills, techniques, and also the immersion into these skills and techniques and teachings. You know, it comes in many forms. Just like we hear music in MP3 format, in WAV format, Auntie would know because you've been recording a lot. You will see all this format. Dot MP3, dot MP4, which is a video including. So does the the information we receive through our parents, through our ancestor via the book, through our religion, which is the Buddha Sutra. I know Buddhism is not technically a religion, but it's still a teaching. And all through, you know, your friends, you know. So you receive information, all right? And the greater the intensity of this information, the better it is in your heart, in your mind, and the back of your mind, which is your subconscious, and the easier it is for you to action on it. Hence, Lao He Sang, Master Ching Kong say, it's important to immerse yourself long enough so that when time comes you can when you face with you know trouble guests trouble co-worker trouble customer trouble situations in your life you will be able to navigate yourself out of it mentally it's always mental and then physical and stuff so i'm not going too far but because this is a this is this chapter today is about everyday people us what all of us no matter who you are we will commit this pitfalls easily you know fall into these um, uh, mistakes and uh, uh, it's important for us to keep in mind you know you can control the condition in the middle you know it takes from seed to fruit it takes a journey and it's up to us you know to develop ourselves uh, a certain a certain level of discipline just like you develop yourself into the you know a discipline to whatever the job you're doing today or whatever the life you lead today so does us spiritually we need to develop a discipline at how we arrive at you know the destination we want to be whether it be a buddha in pure land or you know as small as you know just be a successful worker in your own field it all takes time persistent practice it's a boring old story but you know water is boring sunlight is boring soil is boring nutrition is boring but that's exactly what they need to grow the seeds into melon, which is the interesting part. Interesting comes from boring. If we can't find something interesting from the boring, then we failed at life, in a sense. So learn to deal with the boringness. And, well, I might be a bit heavy on my sentence last there. Sorry, I'm talking to myself, actually. If you can't find something interesting in the boring, it's because we didn't look hard enough, you know find interesting things in your daily mundane life and then you start from there you will create something new you will find opportunities that you can you know turn to your benefit which is your cultivation you know benefit of your cultivation and speaking of benefits this is what today is all about before we go in there let's look part three transgression of the common people transgression of the common people in chinese si shu zhi e. This is not technically part of the book. This is part of the um, commentaries. Um, actually, pre-Master Ching Kong. It was done already, carved into many sections. And this is for us to understand better, navigate better. Otherwise, we'll be just reading the script and will be a bit hard to digest. So, everyday people, you and I, you know, the street, the, the guy across the street, your co-worker, 
everyone, right, we have our own hurdle to overcome. That's what makes us, you know, um, how to say, that's what keeps us from moving on. Or this is what we need in order to break, make a bigger breakthrough in our life, all right? It doesn't have to be crazy rich, crazy famous. Those are very shallow definition. It can be yesterday I easily triggered by this, this, this. Uh, by by uh, annoying sound or by annoying stuff or my mind easily wandered all right in the in the span of an hour i wander everywhere else i can sit settle down now today i able to settle down without ha having a lot of wandering thoughts i'm able to focus my task at hand and be at peace even though i have nothing to do something as simple as that is actually quite powerful because it will if you explain if you understand it better if you if you if you if you keep this at the back of your mind, when things come, you will be able to deal with it uh, with relative maturity um, insight because you are not jumping around like everyone else. You know, you're able to see better wavelength than other people. Everyone follow the follow the uh, noise, but you see the source of the noise, so to speak. Okay, enough metaphor. Back to the actual clause. So the first clause they talk about. Failing to make reasonable efforts to correct one's faults. To know good deeds and refuse to do them. So, in here, we need to understand, um, yeah, literally speaking, knowing what is wrong, we don't change. Knowing what is right or what is good, we didn't do it. Or we didn't, we reluctantly do it. Uh, um, that's straightforward the, the question is why why do we have this situation where we know this is wrong we still do it or why do I have this situation of this is good stuff but I'm still reluctant you know we, we know it's good stuff we claim we know it's good stuff we claim we know it's harmful but deep down do we really really understand the harm it caused to us to really, really understand the good, it benefits us. We don't. I I can confidently say that. All right. Let's give you an even simpler scenario. Might be a little bit brute, a little bit unrefined. If someone say, today you sit sit down in a, uh, you clean up, you know, my room for one hour. I'll give you one million dollars. Everyone will go, you can rush and clean every single corner. Make sure no dust is gone. Because they know, they can feel, they can visualize the benefit in their mind. One million dollars. Every single dust, I need to pick it up, make it squeaky clean so that I will get my one million dollar. And this one million dollar translates into mortgage paid, travel to US everywhere, or travel to Australia, travel across the world, translate into no need to work for terrible employer or, or uh, environment, right, Alison? No need to work for those terrible, no need to endure this terrible situation anymore. So all this benefit comes in your mind immediately. You can visualize, you can see yourself, you can smell it, you can taste it, you can live it. So hence, you don't need to think, oh, it's good. You just do it. All right? That's a bit... I hope it's straightforward enough. Let's bring another scenario that reflects the first half. What is faults? Why is it hard to change one's fault? Obviously, we talk about habits. We talk about brain wiring. We talk about neuroscience and all that. We talk about how we were wired to do certain things and we can't just change it. It, it is true. It's hard. But the thing is that if we really know how harmful it does to us, no matter mentally, physically, spiritually, um, you know, mentally also includes emotionally. Um, that would we won't do that, right? Using physical example, you know, um, if I told you there's a mercury in your cereal, would you eat it? No. You know, every day I eat cereal, so you know, a little mercury or something won't hurt me. No, you wouldn't think like that. You would be like. That's a mercury. If I eat mercury, I'm going to get poisoning. All right, lead poisoning, and I'll die. Wait, lead poisoning. Sorry, I think I'm mixed up. Is it lead poisoning if you eat mercury? 
right. Anyway, the point is, you know it's harmful, so you don't do that. All right. So, you know, these are our common sense. We all know that, and we like this is benefit. This is called harm. So that's the point I'm trying to make. And that's the point Master Ching Kong made in his commentary. I just extracted out. Failing to make reasonable efforts. In in here, there's two Chinese words you should be more. You should pay attention to. All right, which is relating to what I'm trying to um, connect. Feel free to chip in, Jenny or Ellison, uh, if you have a if you if you have a point to make uh, with that, it's fine. We can uh, you know, ping pong around the ideas, obviously. Uh, so please allow me to have a pointer first, just a sec. Here we go, pen. Can you guys see the laser pointer? <laughs> Now the question is, do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Do you actually know? Do you really know it? Just like what I say, do you really know it to a level where you can taste it, see it, um, smell it, touch it? Sorry, I'm muted. So do you do you know it to the level to that level? If you don't know it to that level, that means we need to do more. Which is what I'm saying, the immersion, you know, get along with people who actually are on the same journey as you are, or a little bit ahead of you, or ahead of you, or find teachers who are already accomplished, someone who can help you, all right? Um, do what you can. So, first step of this journey is know. Do you know or do you not know? Not knowing is, is a lot of, it contributes a lot of uh, issues of the deeds repeating again not knowing enough i think is the main problem here how do we know enough right um, there are many ways uh, some very sharp people they already know it they don't even need to experience the harm they already can see themselves being harmed and they will automatically stay away like you're looking at fire burning in your house you won't be like this is my house i still want to go in you will be like i'm staying away so that's level one. Level two is you still not aware. The fire is burning. Maybe you're blindfolded or anything, but you can start start smelling. You can start feeling the heat you know, approaching, choking your skin. You haven't been scalded, but you have, you know, a close proximity to the heat, to the level where you feel uncomfortable, like in a trap situation, not yet harmed, but you know. In danger, or about to be in danger, and then you should hop out of it. That's number two. Number three is you get burned, scalded, third degree, and everything. You climb up, barely alive, go into the ER, emergency response team, and then they're just trying to save you. And then you wake up and say, "Yeah, I did the wrong thing." So we not, don't be number three, obviously, um, but life, and especially some of us very impulsive you can rush into it and then not knowing the cost what i'm trying to say is to know what is harmful and to know what is um, beneficial is number one is a way to start with all right um, harmful and beneficial how do we define it in what terms apologies i need to close the door brother watching movie Apologies, back to the point. What is beneficial? What is harmful? All right. First, we can say harmful to me, beneficial to me. That's not enough, though. You have to deal with people. All right. I'm talking about in an ordinary people level. Okay. You have to interact with people. You have to talk with people. You need to rely on people. So do others on you. All right. It's just a matter of who's more and who's less. All right. So this is a this is where you need to start thinking beneficial or harmful in a bigger sense. Is it beneficial or harmful for all of us in the long run? Say, in start from family, very simple. You need a whole unit of family. Is it beneficial or harmful to the family? All right? And that, you start to think in your action, your speech, your thought. Is it harmful to my family? Is it beneficial to my family? My parents, my siblings, if you're married, your spouse or your partner, if you're de facto, not married, but de facto partners. Doesn't matter, like your family or your children, obviously, 
your children. All right. And then you move forward. If you're in a company, if you're in a team, you know, or in the organization like, you know, our association, youth group or the Amitabha Association, is it harmful or benefit to us? What we did, uh, wearing that, uh, you know, uniform, you know, is our behavior bringing bad reputation to the association or something, or to the bank or stuff, stuff like that? And and that 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 consequences will fall into yourself personally in many forms, financial, reputational, moral, etc. So these are the the things we all need to think about every day. All right, when you purchase groceries you know is this food something really beneficial to my life or I just want it I don't care I like that Dorito God it tastes so good double cheese something like that alright like if I have it that's it I'm gonna put another week ahead so I'm, I'm saying all these small little things so that we can kind of get started with let's call warm up alright then we can go to a little bit more deep philosophical what is right, what is wrong, what is evil, what is good, how do you define it, what is true, what is false. We talk quite a bit of it and rep it in like two times at least in a, in, in, in a, in a, in a talk in Leo Fan's Four Lessons. You talk about kindness, there are apparent or real, you know, big or small, uh, half or full. Uh, that's where we start to get more this is why I call about discipline, skillfulness. All right, this session is also helping us to, you know, set our tra tra trajectory. No matter where your trajectory is, you know, if you want to get a good outcome, you need to plant the good seeds. You need to plant the good conditions. Conditions takes time, takes place, and you need to be able to take it. And then you know your mindset. If you set it, you set your 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 because we human are goal focused, mind focused um, creatures. Uh, being and 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 we need if we can set a goal it's easier for us to you know put ourselves forward and 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 no matter what happens you know you're able to put your mind into that goal that milestone like you know this is beyond I mean this is this is not something I need to bother myself with because this is not helping me to towards achieving the goal so I'm gonna let it go so in our case Pure Land is our goal that is a huge goal huge under task, huge undertaking all right it's bigger than ceo president emperor even emperor it's trying to get out of this cage that you cannot see that means get out of your mental cage get out of your physical cage physical physics cage get out of your mental cage which is all these thoughts emotions experiences sensations hatred love ignorance these are very raw very real stuff that will they will you know that's already there it just takes a few matches to to trigger it so we need to overcome all this to get out of the big cage i'm saying something really huge or as small as i just want to get by another day without you know feeling uh like crap It'll be you know like the thing I'm worrying about my day job my daily life or sometimes I don't get along with my co-worker you know or sometimes I can't find a you know a way to communicate with my co-worker well you know people just don't understand me or you know during rush hours everything was hectic I just can't stop All right. happens to me still happening to me and I think it happens to a few of us as well right so those things as well, you know, those are the those are the homework. Those are the homework we need to do. All right. And it's up to us to think, you know, what is beneficial, what is harmful. All right. And in this case, you know, is it beneficial for me you know, to look at it on the side of negatives like oh, it's painful, it's painful. Focus it only on that. Or is it beneficial for me to actually start looking at it as a side of I can use this as a springboard to my personal development. All right? If I'm awkward, if I can't find a conversation, I'm going to talk like an idiot. I don't care. I'm going to stand out there and talk. Or I'm going to stand out there and listen. You and I just give an expression or anything to overcome that. You know, I might not be able to do it now. I'm going to do it. 
when there is a chance. Right? Doesn't matter how bad or good it is. I'm gonna get through my mental cage so that I can I can break through this because I have bigger things to deal with. All right. But this is step one. You can apply in your case, which you know you guys can share now or any time when you feel like it's time. So so we move on to level two. What is right, what is wrong? All right. Still relate to beneficial and harmful. Right? Beneficial means good cause, good seeds, good effect. Harmful is bad seeds, bad effect. Condition will turn, you know, turn sides. Depends on what you put into it. If you don't put okay, let's not go too far. Right and wrong. Right? We talk about you know the view, the right view, the wrong view. Alright. That's the mindset thing. That's what we talk about. When you situation like this happening to you. What's your view? You know, are you going to go into the loop? Are you going to allow yourself to con- indulge? I'm not saying that you won't be, uh, you will be able to stop it, but are you going to indulge in that negativeness, which is uh, unfortunately myself included have easy, easy to navigate, like easy to fall into, or am I going to allow to myself to a bit of distance to see what it is? Maybe I overdone it. Uh, maybe I'm too impatient maybe I need to be more um, observant maybe I need I just need to be in the moment don't think too much alright that event unfold by itself maybe it's my head exaggerating it, stuff like that and then I slowly slowly you know ease out those things you can't just tell your brain relax relax the more you say the more it jump you have to just after the event you're just gonna let it cool down so Right view is important, all right? Because Master Kichun Kong keeps saying, no wandering thoughts, no wandering thoughts. Those are principle. How do you use it? How do you put it in daily life? How do we achieve no wandering thoughts? Just like saying, hey man, go get a PhD in astronomy. That's Master Kichun Kong trying to tell us a lot of ways and methods, but if we want to systematize, how do you achieve PhD in astronomy? You have to start with physics, start with mathematics, start with a basic understanding of the calculus, algebra, those are high school stuff. And then you have to go up to advance, you have to go to matrix, you have to learn how the how the how the orbit works and how the orbit works with other orbits and how do you blah blah blah. Right? Same for us, every everyone, right? There are steps to get there. There are always ways to get there. Right? You may not be able to do it now, but damn sure that you will be doing it in the future. Have that level of confidence in yourself ultimately Buddhism is about confidence in the self yes we talk about there's no self because we attach ourselves too much to the body to the to the perception the false perception of self which is level 3 sorry I jump but Buddhism does not say there you can't there's no self as they're trying to tell you don't attach to this notion because Changde Wajing in Chinese in Buddhism is called there is permanence. There's something that is permanent. There is truly yours. That means you can control it all the time. There is Changle um, uh, Jing. And there is always joyful, equanimity, peace and joy. And then there is always pure and untainted, no matter what was thrown at them. That's your Buddha nature. That is you. If you're talking about you, we don't fall into the habit of this body is me. This mind, this concept is me. That's what everyone get. Most people get it wrong. Oh God, it's Buddha. It's not me. I don't say this. I don't know. Before I say this, I don't know this. So now I know this. So what is real and what is illusory? That's what I'm talking about. Sorry, man. Just have a moment there. Anyway, um, what is right and what is wrong? Evil, good, true, and false. All right. This is still in the mental level, but the last one. It's the one that once you get it, you get it. All right. You don't get it, it's okay. Keep keep going. All right. On and then the rest, your body, your your speech, your thought, those are mechanical. You you would do it. Alright. As you will. As you will it. <clears throat> So, 
Master Chinko has mentioned about this and he has talked about right, wrong, evil, good, true, false, and then the last level is you know, what is real, what is illusory, and why you need to have confidence in yourself and how do you have confidence in yourself. It's absolutely paramount in achieving anything. If you want to hold this class together, you need to at least to be able to have confidence that what I'm trying to say, all right, it's truly out of my heart. It's truly in accordance to Buddha's teaching. That requires first your discipline, you understand what the teacher is talking about, and then you know bring your own immerse into it. Be in the moment with 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 what you're doing, all right, and and let it flow, let it bounce, all right. So thus. You know, in your work, right? So, say, Edison, you work in the restaurant, or say, um, Auntie, you work in, you know, video recording, hosting, and stuff. Uh, or Jane, you know, you are um, uh, exploring concepts and ideas. Those things you need to have. I mean, or uh, doing the you know, occupational therapy. Everyone has their own gig to deal with, you know, and and everyone has to deal with this because it's survival, it's everyday stuff. And and beyond that, we want to grow as a person um, and uh, knowing what is right and what is wrong will separate you a lot from the others who are not aware uh, now that you're aware you know the matter is how do we put do and no, know and do together to so know something and actually do something do something that requires you to experience it first time life all the all the perceptions, or the our perception and their perception, their reaction as well. It's raw, and and you don't know a lot of things. You know, you don't have the ability to see, all right, what they think, how they think. There's a reason why you can't, because we are so trapped in our own perception. Like water is muddy. Of course, you can't see what they think or know what they think. When your water is clear, which is deep tranquility. You don't need to see. They will appear before you. Like a mirror. The reason you can't see is because you muddy your own water. Not because innately you can't. That's why the this is where confidence comes from. You are already omnipotent. It's just trapped in this um, how to say self inflicting harm. Right? That is illusory. That if it gets too much it will force us to do something that we say morally wrong harming others all right or evil say manipulating people to get gains in wealth power or you know any favors that you like your desires um, thinking that it is actually giving you happiness right it's not it's illusory it's not you so, going back to the first sentence, failing to make reasonable efforts to correct one fault, failing to make reasonable efforts is because we can't see it. Just like I said, if you can see yourself earning $1 million in a span of one day by just doing this job, you won't even need to think, you just do it. It's because it's beneficial. All right? Say, so if someone say, if you need Amitov for 10 times, you earn $1 million. I can say the whole world we just need Amitov for. <laughs> Obviously, it's... It, Obviously, the point is uh, the real benefit of Amitofo or any cultivation is what I just said. Able to discern it. Th this is how it works. right? This is a stage. And there's a reason why we're stuck here and not able to do it. All right? Because we are you know, not learning the lessons. So we cannot upgrade ourselves. And how do we learn the lessons? I can't say for you all because my water is muddy as well. But what I can say is, so far, the, the, the level I found is, um, you know, we got to have to, you know, not hug the scene, not letting go, but let it come. It will come again, trust me, deja vu. Deja vu happens for a reason. It happened again, and how you react or how you deal with this, it is very much, very much depending on your skill, skillfulness. Um, skillfulness does not necessarily mean you need to practically like, you know, actually do something. It's just, are you be able to hold on to that moment? I mean, are you able to hold on, hold yourself together at that moment? You know, are you able to quickly tap into this no knowledge, no knowledge? 
and use it against, I mean, use it at the very right moment. If you're able to use it at the right moment, knowledge becomes a wisdom. It becomes beyond just reading of the books or listen to Dylan or listen to some podcast or listen to Master Ching Kong. It's yours because you are using it, you're holding it, you're applying it and it what it happens to you, you're able to capture it and turn it into something that is a nutrition to you, not a, not a poison. That's the benefit. Why is it a benefit? You can apply in anything you pursue. You can pursue your career, pursue your relationship, pursue your hobby, pursue your passion, or pursue anything. As long as you know you understand this law of cause and effect, knowing the importance of conditions, and that being that you need to start learning, you know, uh, what is good, what is right, what is wrong, in a literal way, and then you start to understand what is actually harmful and what is actually beneficial and then what is real, what is false. All right. And, and and then from this cognitive level, which is you know thinking brain into emotional, it actually connects with you who you are and and able to uh, do it. Just like that. Just like you drink water. That's important. You know, emotionally connect to it spiritually connected it's important all right and um, that requires immersion human you know a lot of uh, just listen you know one when, when you have this little pocket of time to this session go ahead immerse in it or when you have um, moments you know where you or people or people sharing post that actually kicks into that they actually talks to you at what you are experiencing then you know, that's adding to your to your preparation. All right, um, and then also if you're on your own, um, examine yourself. Like I can't say I have no desire. I can't say I clear everything of desire, but what I need to do is I need to put things in perspective, in moderation. I know that I want this thing, um, or maybe I know I want to pursue this and that. So I'm just going to focus my energy on one thing. As long as it's harmful. Always remember the three rules. What is harmful, what is beneficial, what is right, what is wrong, what is real, what is false. All right? As long as it's beneficial, not just to myself, but to everyone, it actually helps people. All right? Helping others is helping ourselves. All right? If we're only helping ourselves at the expense of others, now that is a very nuanced topic we can explore. All right? If helping Beneficiary always at the expense of others. Remember, everything has reaction. All right, karma is talking about this. It will bounce back to you. So it is not help helping yourself in long run. Truly helping yourself is truly helping others, and that means going through this homework of reluctant to give, reluctant to help, reluctant to do good because it's inconvenient. I'm trying to get to work and this happens and ah uh, bye. You know, this happens to me. So you need to confront yourself about it. And of course, give yourself a space, but also push yourself when you need to push. Otherwise, you can't grow. If you can't grow, you're stuck. And if you're stuck, tragedy happens again and again. You know, it, it's, 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 it's going to play like a broken record tape. It's going to happen again and again. So ask yourself a little bit every day. Can I do more? What can I do for others a little bit? Even helping them with, you know, say, washing dishes or, you know, taking over a little bit of their job, uh, lighten their load with within reason, of course, right? Um, and then slowly widening your life like that, you know. Don't, don't trap into this false perception of self. I'm not saying that you have no agency over your life. I'm saying that you need to put your agency of your life, hence the right wheel, in a place that is correct, that is actually productive. A lot of us, we call ordinary beings, has this trespassing uh, transgression because we put it at the wrong high vantage point. We put it at a very narrow understanding of self. Hence, we benefit ourself. Self means... You know, as long as I'm good, as long as I'm 
well be well to do. I don't need to care about this or self as means um, I'm going to get that, you know, uh, money or something at the expense of say cutting corners, tricking others or being rude to others, you know, being, how to say, excessively forceful towards them without helping them to grow. So I can do this at the expense of other people's uh, financial or mental health. So that is not good, right? That That's where the karma is and that's why you have, you know, situations happen as in, you know, cause and effect. So yeah, so I'm, I'm not going to go too far on this. Uh, I will open up for people to talk about, you know, the experience so far in relation to, you know, how do we make ourselves uh, more uh, proactive in correcting our faults? I mean, more effective at correcting our faults. And how do we more proactively do good? You know, it's reluctant. It's going to be reluctant. It's going to be hard. It's going to be like awkward. But that's how it started, you know. To be not awkward, you need to start to be awkward. To be a good speaker, you need to start to be a very awkward speaker. To be a good actor, you need to be, start to be a very awkward. Uh, you can't even do facial emotion, all right? To be a Buddha, obviously you start with being being an ordinary being. Buddha come from ordinary being. To be a master at what you place, you need to start to be an undergrad. You gotta start somewhere, man. And so, please share with us where do you start now, or where do, where are you now, and and how do you you know how does this phrase or you know whatever this lessons trying to um, say will help you to get to where you want to be. So where you are now and where you want to be, and how is this going to help you? Anyone? Ah, me, to, for, ah, me. To for a me 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 for dedication of merits. May the merits and virtues accrue from this talk, adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this aspire by their enlightened mind, be vowed to be born together in the land of ultimate bliss and also may this merit reach out to the people of the world may their wish come true may their heart be pure and kind and peaceful may they all be well be free from worries sufferings diseased and may all who hear and listen to this uh, eventually aspire to be born in pure land and achieve eternal happiness now more amitofo thank you so much everyone for today. Have a good night and morning to you, Auntie. Uh, bye bye. <laughs>